Hey, good morning guys. Today I'm gonna to take a left turn away from things that we've normally been talking about. We've been talking about things like atoms and molecules and weather and atmosphere, but today I'm gonna to talk to you about living things. I'm talking to you about worms, jumping worms specifically. So right now the United States is going through basically an invasion of these worms. These worms from Japan and Korea are spreading across the United States and they're taking the place of the worms that we're used to. They started out in the southern states and along the Atlantic coast but now they are spreading into the west and a little bit more of the northeast. They're called jumping worms because they wiggle so much more than normal worms that we're used to. So this is a worm I pulled out of the garden this morning and he's sitting here in the dirt. He likes the dirt because he's breaking down leaves. He's breaking down dead plant. He likes to wiggle a little bit too. The jumping worms are much bigger, bigger wigglers. My fingers are a little sticky from the slimy, slimy outer layer of that worm. He was squeezing some mucus. The great thing about worms, worms are decomposers. In an ecosystem, you need different types of organisms. You need the primary producers. Those are the plants, the plants that are taking just the basic, basic substances and turning some carbon dioxide, some water and sunlight into their bodies, into plant material. Then you have the primary consumers and those are the ones that eat Eat the plants and then you have the secondary consumers these are the predators the ones that eat the ones that let eat the plants okay so you have different levels of this but it's a cycle so how does the predators body mass how does that turn back into something that the producers can use it comes to decomposers decomposers like worms which are gonna take and break down all this plant material into just tiny little nuggets in the soil and one of the great things about worms is that they do this so well. So all this stuff here is gonna be broken down by worms. As long as I leave it out in the yard for long enough, it will break down smaller and smaller and smaller. This is my family's compost bin. This is where we put in old scraps, pieces of food, eggshells, things from the kitchen, things that we want to break down. We've got decomposers in here. If you look closely, you can see little flies wiggling around. If I dig through, I'm going to see those earwigs are helping to break down all of this organic matter into rich soil. So inside this bucket was a whole bunch of food scraps and some leaves. And over time, these decomposers have been working for us. Now the problem with these jumping worms, these jumping worms are really good at breaking down the soil to the point that all of this that would cover the forest floor would be gone. It would turn it completely into soil again, which if you're composting in your backyard and you have a separate spot for compost, you don't care if there's any plants or animals living there as long as it gets composted and broken down. But the problem is, is that in a forest ecosystem or whatever ecosystem you have, you have plants and organisms that like to live in the compost. So these jumping worms are displacing the other organisms that would have been living in this part of the ecosystem. More crazy stuff about these worms, they are such good reproducers that they can reproduce faster than a typical earthworm and they can do it without a mate. So just one worm by itself got transported in somebody's bait bucket because they were using it for fishing, transports across state lines to somewhere else. That one worm can split and cre create its own babies and it's going to have its own new population that starts with just one worm. All right, that's our show for the day, guys. Have a great day and enjoy these links to learn a little bit more about worms and jumping worms. Bye-bye.